Hello, hello, hello. What's up, guys? So today we've got a couple things to do. I got a co actually a couple unboxings. We're going to be checking out the Golden Ear Super Sub X. And I've got one other unboxing. Not really an unboxing. I'm just going to take them out of the big box and um, just give a quick overview. And we'll just go over maybe like the weekly recap. Maybe I'll take a couple questions. But it's going to be a quick one today. Well, let's first let's first tackle this unboxing. All right, we're gonna do the Golden Ear Super Sub X unboxing first. Just switch mics. All right, so this is what we're doing today. So let me just switch over. Not that one. So this is the. Uh, Golden Ear Super Sub X. You can see a few of the specs here. But this is what we got. This is the Golden Ear Super Sub X. This has got dual eight inch ultra long throw active drivers and two vertically opposed 10 and a half inch and nine and a half inch planner infrasonic radiators which is fancy for saying passive radiators so this comes courtesy of golden ear and value electronics this bad boy here is one thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars so it's not a cheap subwoofer. Although it is supposed to sound pretty awesome. And this looks to be a box within a box. One of those deals. Ah, uh, boy, hold on. At least it's, at least it's good packaging. For a little tiny subwoofer, this thing is uh, this thing's heavy as hell. Um, all right. So this is it here. This little guy. So it's like a double unboxing, right? So it's thirteen seventy five. I picked up recently the the matching soundbar to this, which is the 3D Array X. And uh, I have been using the soundbar, but it doesn't sound very good without without the subwoofer. But all right, so inside the box we get the manual, owner's manual, right there. Right there, catch focus. No. Whatever. Manual, and we got the power cord. That's pretty much it for uh, accessories. And now we have the subwoofer. So this thing weighs 40 pounds out of the box. 40 pounds. It's 40 pounds. Size wise, it's a uh, 14 inches high. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's actually very nice. So size-wise, it's uh, 14 inches high. Sorry, 14 inches wide by 12 and three quarter inches high by 13 and a quarter inches deep. So it's a stout little cube. Now, if you check out the um, 
Check out the back panel here. So back panel, we uh, what do we got? AC input. We got uh, that's your volume control. Low pass crossover from 40 to 150 hertz. There you got your LFE bypass. RCA inputs. No XLRs, unfortunately. So just regular RCA, and that's pretty much it as far as uh, I.O. And up top here, you can see the, uh, up top you can see the, I think this is the 10 inch passive radiator. So that's the 10 inch one, 10 and a half inch one. And on the bottom is the nine and a half inch passive radiator. It does have some pretty thick rubber feet in the bottom there. Gloss finish. And on each side is the 8-inch dual opposed drivers. So one on the left, one on the right side. And this is powered by a 1400 watt Class D amplifier. So it's got a little bit of juice. Look at that, so it's uh, really nice. Um, it's very short, very stout, very heavy. And uh, it looks, like to be, looks to be a very nice stout subwoofer. Frequency response is down, goes down to 12 hertz. So it's 12 hertz to 250 hertz. So I mean, it's got dual eight inch drivers. So if you add two eight inchers together, that equals equals 16 inches, right? Of a uh, of driver size. But here are the specs. So there's actually two models. There's a, the Super Sub X, and there's the Super Sub Double XL. The uh, double XL is a little bit beefier. So the bigger version goes down to 10 hertz. This small guy goes down to 12 hertz. So I figured I'd get the smaller one in just because I got the smaller sound bar. The smaller sound bar is this guy here, which is the, the 3D Array XL. Or sorry, the 3D Array X. So I figured the um, the Super Sub X was the perfect match for it. So I should have this video out. I'm shooting for next week. Sound bars don't typically take that long to do. So that's on next week's agenda. And then I'm going to knock out a couple of other things. Um, I have one other thing I wanted to kind of unbox, actually. Let me just grab that really quick. This one, let me switch over. This one here is actually going to go over to, we're going to do this over on Audioholics. couple of amplifiers. Oh, I got so much stuff over here. Oh. This is a uh, from Beale Street Audio. These are a couple of amplifiers. So these are two commercial amps for like multi-room applications. This is the BAV2500 right there, Beale Street Audio. And then this is the BAV4250. So this first one here is a two-channel amp. 
This is a two channel amp. This is two by, I think it's 500. Look at the specs, yeah. So it's two by 500. It's got balance ins and outs. Mm, it's got a web-based GUI. I'm not gonna take this out of the box because I'm gonna do an official one over on Audioholics. And then this guy here is the bigger one. This is the four channel one, I do believe. So this is a four channel amp, 250 watts per channel. Same thing, uh, I believe it's class D if I'm not mistaken. And it's got the DSP and all that good stuff. You can configure your, your speakers through their online GUI graphical user interface. But these ones I'm gonna be saving for the Audioholics channel. So that's what's going on with these guys here. I don't think these are, these are not really like home theater amplifiers. Like I said, I think they're more commercial branded amps. So they're for like, you know, multi-room audio. I actually, I don't have any like multi-room audio in my house, except for, I've got some name products, which is obviously through like Wi-Fi, but this is hardwired. I guess I'm just gonna have to use a couple, a uh, few pairs of extra bookshelves that I got lying around to hook those things up, up with. But we'll see how it is. I mean, I've never had an amplifier that used a web-based, you know, UI before. So that'll be interesting. And aside from that, what else we got? Oh, let's talk about a couple of the videos that I did this week, which would be recently Knives Out. I did that two days ago. The Knives Out, Knives Out 4K Blu-ray review. I don't know if you guys had seen that or not. That is a good movie. I enjoy the movie. Mystery, kind of like Clue, and also kind of like that, what is that, Murder on the Orient Express? Kind of in the same vein. Although I do think the Murder on the Orient Express was a better looking movie. There's more CGI in that one for sure, but I thought it was a more impressive looking. The uh, Knives Out definitely had artificial grain. I did do a little Google search on it. They did add a LUT, which added some special calculated film grain. So the grain pattern would be very, it would just move around to, to look more like natural film grain. So if any of you guys had seen the movie, I'm sure you have realized that yes, there's film grain in it. Colors were nothing crazy. Natural, very pun, like, mm, mm, I wouldn't say very punchy, but uh, very deep, rich colors on it, I thought. Just not really vibrant. More natural, yet deep and rich. Not razor sharp, a little bit of softness due to the artificial grain, and I guess they just wanted, wanted it to have that, that film look to it. Audio, you know, not much going on for the audio in that movie. There were just like a couple handful of things. I think I mentioned like three, but really it's just all like a dialogue driven movie. Nothing really special. I mean, I guess it's perfectly fine for what it is. But um, as far as just like a straight movie, I thought it was good. Definitely worth a watch. Pick it up if you haven't seen it. Knives Out comes out, I think this, this Tuesday. I'm not sure what's the date on that so knives out comes out this title will will be released february 25th so yeah tuesday so it comes out on tuesday and what else did we do we did the valencia seating like i said in the video actually I actually didn't think these were going to be all that comfortable. They kind of look like automotive seats. You know what I mean? 
you know, with the adjustable headrest and lumbar support. But really, it was very comfy. And these are now in my living room. So not only do I have a dedicated home theater, now I kind of have a regular home theater in the living room. And you know, I was uh, looking at this on Amazon and now it's currently unavailable. So when I shot the video, they were $22.99. Now it looks like they're at least sold out on Amazon. But it's pretty cool though, you do get the um, the middle console there which you can put your drinks and food on and all that all that good stuff but if you have more than two people over for a movie that third guy is going to be squished dead center in the middle seat and that middle seat is it, it just feels a lot smaller than the end seats do now, the one thing that I do really like about the seat is the lumbar support. There's a there's a, a little kind of like a bar that comes out of the back backrest there, and it pushes out your back so you're not sinking into the seat. It kind of pushes your back outwards. So if you have any back issues, like I do, like my lower back kills all the time, this makes it so much more comfortable to sit for longer durations when you're watching a movie. Definitely a good feature. And of course you have the, the motorized headrest, which as I mentioned, kind of like a car, right? Almost kind of like a, like bucket seats. Quilted pattern. I'm not, not the biggest fan of the quilted pattern, but you know what you're gonna do. Um, decent leather. It's not, it's, what is it? It's a Napa leather. So, you know, it's not like super high, high grain leather, like maybe like a leather jacket would be, or maybe some of the more expensive seats that you would see from like Salamander. Um, so it's not really thick. I believe it's just like the top grain. There's a very thin layer of layer, thin layer of leather on the top of, of the surface, but it's uh, supposed to be real. I mean, it smells nice. Doesn't quite smell like my leather jackets do, but or not as quite as thick as my leather jackets, but it's still still nice nonetheless. And those are those are twenty three hundred dollars for a trio. If you didn't like the middle console, you can purchase that without the middle console, of course. And which I think you can. I think it's called the, the Valencia Oxford, I do believe. Valencia Oxford has the one without the without the center console. They have a couple of different ones that look exactly the same. So that's it. We did knives out the seating and then of course we I unboxed the where is it the Sonus Faber there it is Sonus Faber Gravis 6 which is this guy here this is a this is a beast of a subwoofer the most expensive subwoofer that I've had in here for review this has got dual 12 inch drivers in it. Let's go down, go down to the specs here. So frequency response for this guy goes down to 18 Hertz. Heavy subwoofer. What is it? It's a 50, 114 pounds for this bad boy there. If you notice on the, on the front here, it doesn't have a traditional grill. These, I don't know if you can see kind of like the lines going up and down. These are actually like strings, almost like on a cello or something, I guess. And they're just strings and they attach with that metal bar on the top and the bottom there. And my review unit didn't have that. So it's like the drivers, the driver is always free in the open air. I don't know who had it before me, but they definitely didn't give it to me. 
I think it would have looked a lot better with the grill on it. Um, otherwise, the entire, all three sides, the front, left, and the right side, is wrapped in like Italian leather, very soft leather. Like that's real leather. It feels much more premium than the seats actually feel. Uh, but it's very nice. It even smells like real leather. And then I know in this picture, this is kind of like a wooden top plate, but the one that I have is, is glass. And it's just a great subwoofer. The plinth that it sits on, I don't know if it's solid steel, but it's, it's, uh, it's dense. It makes it really heavy. And I'm pretty sure the little, the little legs there are solid steel. So really high quality. It is seven thousand dollars. So no joke. Um, so it is seven grand. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't do the review on this because when I plugged it in, I think it's blown. It sounds something's wrong with the driver. I was listening to the new. Uh, don't judge me. I was listening to the new Justin Bieber album, and there's a fair fair amount of bass in it. And you can hear the one of the woofers. I don't know if it's the front one or the bottom one. Uh, you can hear the woofer kind of flutter. It's like when the bass hits, it goes. Brr, brr, brr. So I mean, that's not that's not a good sign for a seven thousand dollars subwoofer. So I'm guessing whoever had this before me must have just driven it too hard. Either that or maybe it just got damaged in shipping because the box was it was pretty beat looking um i think it ships from, shipped from like canada or something like that but i mean other you know other than it not sounding good for a seven thousand dollar subwoofer um it's beaut um, it's built like beautifully beautifully built the best looking subwoofer that i've had in for review for sure by a long shot um what else so i mean i've been uh, emailing them they're supposed to get me another one in for review like a replacement so i've been waiting on that it's been a few days now i haven't heard anything so i don't know what's going on there huge subwoofer sitting in my living room right now in my living room if you you know if you listen to it at kind of like a low volume it sounds perfectly fine but you crank it up a little bit it just uh just goes to sh goes to shit. It sounds like garbage. And then of course we did. I finally covered the the Rel subwoofers, the Predator fifteen oh eights, which I still have in my system. I actually put them up for sale um, on my Patreon for like buy one get one free. So I don't. I think I might be keeping them. I don't know. I'm still kind of like on the fence about that. Uh, but they do s still sound fantastic. Like I said in the video, probably the best sounding subwoofers that I've had in here for review. I mean, a lot tighter sounding than a lot of the smaller subs that I've had. Uh, when I spoke to uh, John Hunter of Rel, he did mention, which I said in the video, that they didn't want to do any kind of DSP or active crossovers nothing like that they didn't want to have an app for it because he felt strongly that his passive filters are just a lot quicker and reactive over the digital offerings out there which i guess that's true like i'm not an engineer but from what i can tell i mean for a couple of 15 inch subs they outperform the smaller svs's and what other subs are? I've got a couple more smaller subs here as well. I've got a phase technology sub in here, which is a little small 10 inch driver. And it just, it just blows, blows away the 10 inch driver for sure, which I still have to do a review on the phase technology 5.1 system coming up soon. I really got to crank that out because I've had them here for like eight months. Um, but yeah, the rail subs, they're $17.99 a piece. Let's go over to that. So they're seventeen ninety nine a piece. I think they were on sale during the holiday, during Christmas time, for like fifteen hundred. If you were lucky enough to pick those up, my plan was to get, like, stack these. I wanted to get four in my home theater, so I wanted to have two up front. 
you know, kind of like this here, except just two and two, so four together. But it's stacked so high that I, I just couldn't fit it underneath my screen near the front. And I couldn't uh, move the PP16s up front because they're just way too deep. So I really wanted to do four of these guys up front, which I thought would have been a rockin', especially for my little my little theater, but I just couldn't fit it. So then I, I figured maybe I would just sell it, get something else. But for a pair of 15s, man, I I don't I don't know if you're gonna hear a sub that sounds quite as quite as tight and articulate for that money. I, I'm sure a lot of the guys out there are gonna be like, you know, listen, you gotta get the PS audio and the rhythmic and their 18 inch drivers and all this and that. And I've heard some some PS audio subs, and yeah, they will rock your molars out of your mouth your fillings but they just don't sound quite as um, tight and articulate as these guys here they just don't what can I say I mean a buddy of mine has got some uh, PS audios I think they're like dual 15s or something like that and they yeah they definitely rumble the hell out of everything in the uh, neighborhood but just for just like straight quality wise the rails the rails sound awesome they sound fantastic um, like I said, they don't outperform the PB16s for ultra low subsonic frequencies. They just can't do that. I think when I was watching Midway, um, I had shut the PB16s off and then I had the 15s going. And you get a lot of that, you know, the chest vibrating bass. But playing back the same scene over with the 16s, you just get that that bass that just kind of like shakes your chair, just shakes your insides, which the rels just couldn't do. But for the money, I mean, it's like one of those things. It's like you want massive amounts of output or you want just clean, very articulate sounding LFE. So there's a bit of a trade off there. It's, I don't there's, I don't think there's like a, a subwoofer that's totally perfect no matter how much it costs which you know goes to show you even a seven thousand dollar sonus faber comes blown out of the box i i thought maybe that would be kind of like the best of both worlds but uh unfortunately i can't tell i can't tell right now and what else did we do i think that's it i think that's all we covered the past week past two weeks I know I've gotten a lot of requests to get some of those Sioux subwoofers, which is uh, HSU. And I will say that, what do we got here? I am interested to check those out. Their subwoofers are, no, oh, actually, let me not show you that. Um, let me pop that up here real quick. I think it's the VTF-15. This looks like it could be quite possibly maybe the best bang for your buck subwoofer, which is this guy here. I keep messing up the camera, which is this guy. So this is the Sioux subwoofer, the VTF-15H Mark II. Uh, came out December 2014. And right now it's normally Eight ninety nine, but for Valentine's Day, check it out. It's only eight hundred and thirty nine dollars. So I know a few of you have thrown me some um, some requests to get this in for review, and this goes down to sixteen hertz ported, or you can seal it up. It goes to twenty two hertz. Front firing fifteen inch driver, crossover thirty to ninety hertz. How much does this thing weigh? You know, I don't see a weight here, do I? Oh, it's 110 pounds. So this looks like it's going to be a very impressive 15 inch sub. Very curious to see if it can uh, outperform the rel at like literally half the cost. So I do have the uh, 
I actually have this coming. This is coming Thursday. It's coming in Thursday, the 25th. I think that's Thursday. Whatever the 25th is, uh, FedEx is going to be dropping that off. So I do have that coming in. I did request two because I would like to have two, but they could only do one. Um, so I am excited to get that in. Like I said, man, it's only $900 for a 15 inch that goes down to 16 hertz, you know, ported 22 hertz sealed. You could do both of them. I think they got a, the package deal is two for 1050 so i'm hoping they are i'm hoping they sound i'm hoping they sound excellent all right so that's what's coming up we got beale street audio over on beale street audio over on audioholics stay tuned for that um, I'm doing a few videos for them. I'm going to be editing a few videos tonight, actually, for them. And then we got some more, more products, some nicer products, hopefully coming up very soon over on Audioholics. And then I think I might be doing a full review over on my channel. So that's going on over there. We got uh, Super Sub X with the 3D Array soundbar. Spoiler alert, the soundbar sounds very good mixed with my SVS, but I wanted to make it official and do it with a golden ear subwoofer. So it'd be a, you know, all in the family type of thing, which if this goes, the little guy goes down to 12 Hertz, that's going to be pretty impressive. So that's coming up. I'm going to try to get that out this week, actually. And then of course, uh, the Sioux subwoofer, and I still got to do the two SVS SB 3000s. So stay tuned for that. Those are next on my agenda. And then maybe the following week, I'll, I'll try to knock out the ZPD and, of course, the JVC NX7, which um, I, was, I think I've spent enough time with both of those guys to uh, give a, a good assessment of their performance. So stay tuned for that. But all right, I'm going to make this make this quick and see what kind of couple questions you got here. What do we got? Let's see who's in the chat, actually. Can't, I can't seem to scroll up here. Um, what do we got? Similar to my dev text, Neil Hansen. Neil Hansen, Monoprice 9 channel. I'm not going to do a Monoprice 9 channel amplifier. I don't think so. I think they were talking about sending me the um, HTP one for a couple weeks, but you know, I've been waiting to hear back from him about that. Mill SV Orient Express, good climax and more interesting. Was Orient Express better than I was out? I don't know. I I, don't know, I, I I feel like I, I like the characters better in Knives Out. Um, Desmond Dunn, any idea when you will give us your thoughts on the PD Media Player? Yeah, a couple of weeks. I think I just mentioned that. Um, Carson Tolsini, what mic are you using? Sounds good. Well, I switched between the. Um, this is the SM7. Oops, I, this is the SM7B, which is like probably the most popular podcasting mic. So this is the main mic, and then I was using the Rode Wireless Go, which is in my pocket. I was using this guy. These guys are also very popular as well. So this is the Rode Wireless Go. So this is like the receiver, the transmitter attaches onto your um, your camera. So if you're doing interviews or something like that, when you're out in the field, you can mic this up with a little lavalier and it's wireless, it goes to the camera. Dude, it's like 200 bucks. I used this for, 
you know whenever we're out shooting something uh we mic up the uh like the interviewee or if i'm doing my 4k reviews you might see i'm always wearing the little lavalier so that's what i do for most of the 4k reviews if i'm on camera not doing a not doing a live stream so this here so if you want to shoot some good videos with some good audio wireless go man best i love it and it's not super expensive who else we got here big cane 23 what's up big cane are you planning on reviewing the lg sm l11 rg soundbar this year i do so i plan on doing the lg soundbar and hopefully hopefully the samsung soundbar as well for some reason for some reason those soundbars always get a lot of interest those are like my biggest views on the channel are these both of these soundbars so yeah stay tuned for that i think those when do those come out i think the new lg and samsung they come out in about maybe like another three weeks or so i think like three weeks maybe a month but i don't think it's any uh, longer than that so they're coming out pretty soon michael randa will you review the new d15 d17 and matching center demand speakers they look gorgeous hmm I don't know if I'm going to do those or not. I'm not sure. I still have to knock out a few other speaker reviews here. I mean, I still got the boxes here. I got to take care of those. Um, and no, I'm not going to do the Nakamichi Shockwave. You know, you know. I think I told the story before, but he had offered me the Shockwave to do sometime last year. I think right after I did the HTF nine for sony so he offered me to do that and then we're we were going to do it and then he called me up and actually he didn't even call me he emailed me and said uh we're gonna go with another reviewer but thank you and i was like dude i said you, you guys offered me the soundbar and you take it away so um no i'm not gonna do that so i mean there's a ton of other reviews on youtube anyways they're not very good reviews but you know they didn't want me to do it so unfortunately you're stuck with those ones so i'm not going to do the nakamichi uh what else we got here all right so that's it all right so i'm gonna cut this off right here as always guys yo thanks for watching stay tuned for the upcoming reviews um if you're new here like and share video if you have any other questions email send them in I actually have a few emails, but I'm kind of running out of time here, so we'll do that for another time for another video. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next live stream. Have a good one.